this episode of Huber Syndrome, we're talking about movies in 2017. It's gonna be a hell of a year. Let's get into it. It's not all fun and games in 2017. There's also a ton of movies coming out. First I want to talk about, let's get, let's get the apprehension out of the way, okay? And I'm, and I'm still positive. I'm still positive about this, but let's just address the elephant in the room. What if Wonder Woman and Justice League are terrible? What if both of these movies are just train wrecks? Like Suicide Squad, like Batman vs Superman, does that, like, will it, will it be the nail in the coffin to the DC Universe? Like, honestly, if, like, Suicide Squad was terrible, sure. Batman vs Superman had some cool moments. So that Wonder Woman trailer came out and it looked amazing. Patty Jenkins directing it. She did Monster, a couple episodes of The Killing, one of the best shows ever. Watch it on Netflix if you haven't seen The Killing. So much hype. Ray Seward. Um, and it looked great. And I think everyone, because of the trailer, were like, all right, it looks awesome, Wonder Woman. All right, we're back on track, DC, we're in the clear. Then Justice League released some footage. It was kind of mixed. Some people said, oh, the imagery looks good, but who knows what's gonna happen. And I just keep thinking in my head, can DC recover if both of these are train wrecks? What would happen? What is gonna happen? We will find out this year when both of those juggernauts come out. I'm hoping, I'm optimistic. That's it, some apprehension out of the way. You know what's gonna be amazing? Blade Runner 2049. Denis Villeneuve, okay, I hope I pronounce his name right because I checked online how to pronounce his name. Everyone says it differently. In my humble opinion, the best director in Hollywood working right now. In his prime, coming off of Prisoners, Enemy, Sicario, Arrival, operating at peak power. Then we get, I throw a lot of bold statements out here, but I'm serious when I tell you, we get one of the best teaser trailers of all time. This is all we need for Blade Runner, okay? I don't want any more trailers. Why does Hollywood have to just market and market and market and throw trailers and throw trailers and commercials and commercials and all this junk? They just throw junk at us, I'm sick of it. You know, that's why I, I try to go media blackout because I don't want to be smothered by the weight of all their marketing. And this trailer is so beautiful because it, it hints at what the movie's gonna be. It gives us some sick ass images of this movie and, and the style and the look of it. And it leaves the rest up to our imagination which is the best way to go into a movie or a video game, right? Is to just dream and wonder. That is hype right there. That is just pure hype. Like the trailer ends with one of the most revealing shots. And again, it's left up to my imagination because it's all they show, just this little seven or eight second snippet POV shot of Gosling walking through futuristic Los Angeles. If the style of the movie is like raw and gritty like that, Count me in, Blade Runner. Not one of my most anticipated of 2017, but I would be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to Resident Evil, the final chapter. He's gonna suck up some of that T-virus. <sighs> the Resident Evil the final chapter, it's been a hell of a ride. Hell of a ride, like 10 years it feels like, of these Resident Evil movies, and when people ask me, Huber, what do you think, you know, you're, you're a Resident Evil fan, what do you think of the movies? I say, they are awesome, one time, in the movie theater, and then never again. So I'm very excited for the final chapter, because this is it, they're, they're throwing all their cards on the table, they're all in, uh, and one of the things that I hated in the beginning of the franchise is the thing I love most now. And that's Alice. You know, back in the day, I was like, where's Leon? Where's Barry? Where's Wesker? Like, where's Chris? Where's the, the mansion? What, who are all these weird characters? Who's this Alice character? And over time, it, it's funny because whenever they introduce video game characters or, or enemies or plot or anything like that, it's terrible. 
But when they stick to their own guns and their own inventions, like Alice, that's when the series is at its best. And she's turned into a badass character that I'm excited to see finish it off, close the franchise. Uh, I hope it's good. We're really only talking about blockbusters today because, you know, it all comes back to marketing once again. They got the money, they got the big bucks, they're throwing these huge movies down our throats a year in advance, a year and a half advance. All those indie circuit epics, Manchester by the Sea type movies, whiplash hype. You know, we don't hear about those until a couple months out because they don't have as much marketing money. We're really talking about blockbusters today. Next on the list, War for the Planet of the Apes. If Caesar with a pump action shotgun doesn't get you hyped, I don't know what to tell you. Planet of the Apes, I don't really talk about it that much, but it's one of those franchises that I grew up with watching with my grandma. My neighbor when I was young used to have so many VHSs, just walls and walls of VHS tapes. And I used to go over there as a kid and borrow some movies. Uh, their son worked at Blockbuster, so he would take home a bunch of movies. Sometimes there would be screeners. They would have like the weird little screener thing on the bottom. And they had the Planet of the Apes box set. So they had all five of those movies. And I mean, the first one is a masterpiece. If you've not seen the original Planet of the Apes, do so immediately. Chuck Heston, badass movie. You know, it, it's sure the makeup and all that. And the movie came out in like 1968 or something. It still holds up. I mean, you can tell it's people in suits, but there is a style. There is this sinister vibe in that movie that needs to be seen to believe. So War for the Planet of the Apes, we're inching closer to an actual Planet of the Apes. I'm very excited to see how this all turns out. You know, again, Andy Serkis, best in the biz. Just give the man an Oscar already. He's acting. It's acting, Academy. Give him an Oscar. Next up. The best. Favorite movie of all time, folks. Aliens. Nothing will ever surpass it. Ever. Combination of perfection with nostalgia, with just too many good memories. It's an infinitely rewatchable movie. Aliens is really as good as, as good as it gets for me. And here we go. This is it. We're actually getting another alien movie. It's been a very long time because I don't count those AVP train wrecks. And I certainly don't count Prometheus. Don't even get me started on that movie. High highs, low lows. Prometheus, what are you? Are you an alien movie? Are you not an alien movie? It's like they didn't even know when they were making it. Thanks, Lindelof. You know, and, and Ridley Scott, while we're on, the, we're, we're on the subject, hit or miss. Hit or miss, Ridley Scott. You give me the best films of all time or just forgettable ones. Let's hope Alien Covenant is one of the greats. Saw the Red Band trailer, looked pretty badass, looked almost too similar to the formula of Alien. And again, you know, it, it's mixed messaging because Ridley Scott has time and time again said that he's done with Aliens. It, it, it's, it's such conflicting information as a fan, you know, trying to get behind this project because I get behind directors. That's why I'm the most hyped out of any movie for Blade Runner because again, Denis Villeneuve is at the top of Hollywood. We'll see when Dunkirk comes out. Maybe Nolan will rise again. But right now, I honestly think Dennis is the culmination. So that's what I rally behind. The first thing I ever want to know about a movie is who is directing it. Is it Guillermo? Is it, is it Spielberg? Is it Scorsese? So when Ridley Scott is out here telling people, you know, I'm done with aliens, it's been done to death, the creature's been done. We've been there. We've done that. Prometheus is not an alien prequel. It's a standalone. You know, again, it, it's just a mixed messaging. So 
I, I'm just kind of in limbo with Alien Covenant. Again, let's just hope it's one of the greats. It's a moment we've all been waiting for. It's really like the only point to get up in the morning. Star Wars! Oh, Star Wars Episode Eight. Feed me. Give me answers. Where's that trailer? Come on, Disney. Let's get that trailer out, Disney. Let's go, man. 11 months till the movie. Let's go. I can't be media blackout on this because I just don't have the willpower. I need to know. I need to see images. I need to know what happens. I can't wait any longer. Star Wars Episode Eight, Man. Episode 7 was awesome, but Episode 7 left the series in a very awesome spot. Kylo Ren took the chains off, you know, he's going full dark side. Rey found Luke. I mean, it's just hype right now. Everything's ready to explode. It's well, God. Luke Skywalker? We're gonna see Luke Skywalker, like do something. I don't know what he's gonna do. He's gonna do something. It's gonna be amazing. But, you know, we didn't really get to talk about Rogue One. Side note, side note, the Allies didn't get to talk about Rogue One because it was uh, vacation time for all of us. And this movie blew me away for so many reasons. Exceeded my already high expectations. And part of that is because we live in an era of connected universes, backstory, lore, information. We're in the information age. You know, again, I love Marvel. I'm not ragging on Marvel. Disney, Star Wars is Marvel for all intents and purposes. But with the Marvel movies, we're always waiting for the next one. You know, it, 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 it got to a point there where we were sitting in the theater, at least I was, I'm not gonna speak for you. It got to a point where I was sitting in the theater waiting for the post-credits tease to the next one. I'm already looking ahead to the next one. I'm already waiting for the Infinity War because we've been dragging our feet for so long, you know. We're always getting these movies with everyone's backstory, you know. There, there's all this lore. And what I loved about Rogue One was that they didn't spoon-feed us lore and backstory about all these characters. So much of it was implied, and so much of it was left up to my imagination. You let me breathe, you let me wonder. It was like being a kid again. And for a movie that you pretty much know, know how it's gonna end, you know what happens, being able to just kind of dream and, and and wonder and think about these characters was magical. It was a magical moment being in that theater, thinking about them. Rogue One, hell of a movie. Which brings us back to Star Wars Episode Eight. There's really nothing more to say until they drop the trailer. And then of course we're getting three Marvel movies. We're getting Guardians of the Galaxy 2, which uh, hopefully will begin the process of Thanos coming to Earth or wherever the hell he's gonna go, doing something. Thanos, man, get off your ass. So that's it for the show, but if you wanna talk movies, I'm always down. Tweet me, I'm at Michael P. Huber. Uh, we are Easy Allies, Patreon funded because of you. Love and respect to all of you. We are on easyallies.com, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, follow us all on the social medias. We're streaming every day, we're doing reviews. Uh, we're just getting started with this here. I, I just I can't get a grip on it. There's all these games coming out. Got Resident Evil, got Yakuza 0, got Kingdom Hearts 2.8, For Honor. Everything's coming out. It's too much. All these movies. 2017, the year of dreams will never, ever stop. To the Sims Room. You know, some good advice from Brandon Jones, never assume anything, because I know out there, there are some of you watching right now that have never seen the fifth 
Element. It is a must watch. It is a classic. It is in the book of movies you must watch immediately before eating, sleeping, or drinking right now. 